I taught for three years in the South Bronx at a high school. And then I went on to teach for three years in Amsterdam Southeast, the Belmer, also a secondary school. Uh, these are deeply, deeply disadvantaged families and kids uh, that one comes into contact with in these types of institutions. And by far the most pressing question for me that came out of my observations, direct participatory observations, was this. Even though the kids are very capable of sounding pro-school, even though the kids in their calmer moments can say that they want to do well in school, that they don't want to become aggressive, that they want to bring the right materials to class, even though they can sound very conventional and pro-school, why do they so often and so powerfully uh, destroy their own schools? Why do they adopt extremely disruptive and even aggressive here and now in school coping practices? And I was drawn to this question, I felt compelled to ask this question, uh, in part because uh, when I started as a teacher in New York, I would go back to the relevant social scientific literature, and I found time and again that the dominant paradigm for looking at these types of issues was deeply misleading. Um, one of the, if not the most powerful approaches, is the oppositional black culture approach. And I found in terms of uh, racialized identities, the role thereof, I found in terms of explicit mental beliefs and in terms of the kids being uh, uh, rebellious on all three counts, this theory is misleading. It's leading to the wrong types of answers about this question. Why are these massively disadvantaged kids destroying the one institution that could possibly help them escape the clutches of intergenerational poverty, break the cycle of intergenerational poverty. My answer to this question centers around exposure to stress. On the one hand, there is the chronic stress and the gradual effects of being uh, exposed to deep insecurity, physical, emotional. Uh, and on the other hand, there's the immediate here and now uh, a triggering effect of stress. It can feel like it makes sense in the here and now to adopt an aggressive pose, to embrace um, street sounding ideologies, to uh, engage in all kinds of anti-school here and now responses. In the short term it can make perfect sense because of the pressures the kids are under and because of the cumulative exposure to stress. Uh, longer term these are absolutely maladaptive uh, coping strategies. Uh, so the short term and the longer term effects of exposure to chronic stress is the foundation of my answer to this question. And this is exactly what's missing in the dominant literature, which again is over-racializing, um, too quick to bring in uh, a culture and um, some sort of rebellious ideology. What this highlights also is why certain kids were more or less immune to both the longer term um, processes I'm uh, documenting, but also the why they were able to avoid the short term here and now uh, distressing stimuli that led to these um, uh, uh, chaotic and extremely maladaptive coping strategies. And the most interesting finding there had very little to do with what was going on in school. It had a lot to do with the socialization processes outside of school, namely access to stable adults, access to uh, well-regulated environments, uh, environments that are regulated because of uh, stable adults uh, making sure that things would be safe.